Hi and welcome back to part 2 in my tutorial for making a Unity multiplayer game using Mirror. Um, we're going to get straight into making this next part. We had uh, two players moving around with the same keyboard presses in both instances on the last video and we're going to show you just quickly how to fix that. So uh, the player here has a first person controller script. Um, what we're going to do uh, just to save us um, any hassles is we might actually just open this up and turn this into the um, networked version of the same script. So we're going to work on this same script here for the player. So there's a few things that you're going to have to do. I'll just make this a bit bigger so you can see. So um, we're going to have to import mirror. Obviously we're going to have to use mirror um, at the top and uh, one of the key elements here is that we turn this from a mono behavior into a network behavior. So the network behavior means that we have access to all of the uh, more or less the same stuff as we have with mono behaviors, but now they work across the network. So the key elements, if we look down at this script, um, we have a start where we grab the character controller, we can continue doing that, we can continue to grab the um, camera transform, and this is because we need to use the mouse to look up and down, um, but it's actually very useful because what we're going to have to do is switch off the camera at some point. Um, inside the update we just do two things, we look, uh, we check for all the look inputs and we do the looking, and we check for the move inputs and do the moving. So um, this is going to be nice and simple to be able to wrap something around this to make this different. So I'm going to say um, if is local player. Now what this will do is basically um, this will run anything that we want to happen just for the local player and it just simply won't run it for the um, the non-local player. So if is local player, you'll see um, look and move uh, is only done if you happen to be the local player. So it won't take any keyboard input and it won't move around um, as you'd expect it to for uh, if it's not the local player, if it's the, if it's the remote clone, the copy on this machine won't take keyboard input. So if we build and run this we will have one more um, minor issue that I would just like to show you and then I'll show you how to solve it. So I'm just going to build it. So um, oh yeah, in the in the build settings for the player settings um, I changed this to 640 by 480 and the window seemed to work. It was a, didn't work, didn't quite work last time. Um, but if I just click on this build and run um, and then just build it into this temp folder again, you'll see that it should um, build and run in there and I'll show you when it comes up. So the window popped up. Um, the other thing that you'll notice I've done is I've got rid of the um, the camera. I've just disabled the, the other camera on the scene here just because it's uh, an extra thing getting in the way that we don't really need. So we'll uh, quickly just run this as the host. We'll click on to the main editor and we'll run that. Um, as a client, uh, close the build menu and you'll see that we're able to uh, move around in front of this one and if I uh, alt tab to this one you'll see that if I move around we're, we're, we don't seem to be moving so uh, nothing seems to be happening. What's actually happening inside the scene is that um, it's using the same camera um, so we're, we're only seeing it from one camera even though that that's the camera it gets placed in. So we need to make sure that um, we're uh, switching off the camera as well. So we'll jump back to the script um, and we'll add in an else here. Uh, this else is going to mean basically if we're, if we're the local player then we can do the look, we can do the move. Otherwise, so this will be the remote player, this will be a clone effectively that will be controlled by um, by some other connected client. So if we're not the local player, we want to switch the camera off so that we're only viewing things through the camera of the local player. So we'll do that by accessing the camera transform which we have as a variable up the, uh, the start function and we'll get that game object, so the small g game object and we'll just say set active uh, false and we'll just set that to inactive and that'll just um, that'll disable the entire game object. Uh, if we uh, jump back to the code and run this, I'll do the same again and uh, I'll show you it in action. 
Yep, so um, I managed to uh, build and run this, so I'm just going to click LAN host and just move them sort of slightly out of the way. Uh, then with the Unity editor, I'm going to run this as the client. And you'll see if I put both on the screen, you'll see that I can move around um, in this window and I'm able to um, see the other object uh, and orbit around this other object. And if I click back on this one, you'll see the same situation where I'm able to move around this one too and you can see them both in action. So just to um, make this seem a little bit cooler, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to uh, put some music on and time lapse the rest, but I'm just going to create a nice looking level using Pro Builder, um, and then I'll get back to uh, testing this and showing you just the whole thing in action, and we'll get on with the rest of it. So I've got something that looks a little bit nicer. Um, I'm just going to uh, fold these all away. So I'm going to call this um, this empty game object level. Reset its position and take absolutely everything apart from the network manager and chuck it onto that. So I'm able to fold this away. Now the uh, the other thing that I wanted to do is just add in a few network spawn points so you just need to create some empty game objects I'm um, going to call this um, spawn point and these spawn points you need to add uh, network start positions to so you'll see it under the network uh, if you search for network start position you add a network start position now by default you can't really see them I know it's here but um, if you click on the little box to the left of the name you'll be able to pick a color and um, one of these little labels should appear so um, this makes it a little bit easier for them to see the other tip is holding control and shift at the same time and it'll move them around to the surface that they're looking at so if you hold control and shift it turns into a box you can click and drag and it will go into the surface that you're looking at. So I've got uh, just one spawn point there. I'm going to duplicate it with Control D, put another one across here. And um, Control D again, another one across here. And Control D again, another one across there. And um, all those spawn points, I'll just drag them onto level so that they end up in there as well. So I've got four spawn points when you play this game and you respawn it should randomly choose uh, one of those four points um, as it has done just there. Um, so we're going to move on to the next part of this tutorial where we're going to start looking at sync fires and uh, commands and RPCs and um, hopefully we should be able to start shooting.